This game series is the grandest piece of fanfiction I've ever experienced. I'm I Don't Use a Number, and today we're looking at Kingdom Hearts. After a somewhat nonsensical, it'll make more sense after you play every other Kingdom Hearts, kind of, pre-rendered cutscene that blasts Simple and Clean, a song I recognize as the thing that inspired my J-pop addiction, our protagonist, who we will later come to know as Sora, wakes up in a weird dreamscape. This serves as a form of tutorial, where you also make a few vague decisions that actually affect your game quite a bit. So, since the game doesn't do you the courtesy of actually explaining these decisions in non-cryptic ways, I guess I'll fucking do it. You'll be faced with three weapons, a sword, a shield, and a staff, and to be told to pick up and drop one. This decision will influence some of your statistics in the order that you get abilities in, in ways that you can probably guess. You'll probably be fine no matter what you pick. The other decision will ask you a bunch of personal questions about your priorities in life, which is a bit creepy. You're not my mom, Kingdom Hearts. Mind your own damn business. And then it will say that your adventure begins either in the morning, afternoon, or at night. This determines how much experience it takes to level up throughout the game. Morning shoots you ahead at the beginning but makes later levels take much longer, afternoon is balanced, and night makes the early levels take longer but shortens the EXP requirements for later levels. I'd recommend going with either afternoon or night because those involve less possible grinding overall. After you get out of the dreamscape that mysteriously has Disney princesses painted on glass floors by fighting a big shadow monster, you get to experience Sora's life on Destiny Islands, which is by and large fucking boring. Here we meet Sora's two best friends, Kairi, who Sora probably has a crush on, and Riku, the cool rival guy that fangirls the world over will tell you Sora definitely has a crush on. I mean, it's not like we can blame anyone for falling for Riku. Just look at his dreamy blue eyes. It's a blue you can get lost in. <clears throat> anyway, the three of them want to build a raft so they can sail off and explore other worlds, which would be a lovely idea, except the other worlds are in space, you butts! A wooden raft is not a proper substitute for an honest-to-god spaceship! <sighs> Kids are dumb. Most of your time on Destiny Islands is spent finding parts for the raft, which involves you running around parts of the island, which, as I said, is fucking boring. You can also spar a couple of young versions of Final Fantasy characters who are just sort of around for some reason. Finally getting to smack the shit out of Titus is rather enjoyable, even if he's a kid. Ugh, that sounds a little bad. Whatever. <laughs> After a storm rolls in, a bunch of shadow monsters start showing up that you can't hurt. As a child, I kept trying. For like five hours. Kids are dumb. Once you run around enough, you find Riku, who thinks it's a super good idea to go hang out with the darkness because it said it would take him and his friends to another world. He leaves through a darkness portal. Sora does not, and goes to look for Kairi. Weird shit happens to Kairi, and she disappears, while Sora gets the Keyblade. It's a sword that's shaped like a key. Despite how inherently dumb the concept is, I find myself thinking that Keyblades are really goddamn cool for some reason. Must be some sort of gross holdout for me playing this game when I was an impressionable youth. Now, with the ability to fight the tiny shadow monsters, you eventually work your way to and fight the big shadow monster again, then pass out and wake up in another world, Traverse Town. Here, Sora meets cooler Final Fantasy characters who explain that he is the chosen wielder of the Keyblade, and so he is fated to fight against those shadow creatures, called Heartless, that have been devouring various worlds, that's what happened to Destiny Islands, by the way. Meanwhile, Donald Duck 
and Goofy have orders from King Mickey, who has since gone missing, to find the key that can defeat the darkness. I told you this series was goddamn fanfiction. They eventually find Sora, discover he has the Keyblade, and the three of them set out to explore various worlds, almost all of which are based on a Disney property, in hopes of finding Riku, Kairi, and King Mickey, and in doing so get swept up into a grander battle of light versus dark, most of which involves battling Heartless. I hope you got all that, because the story and lore only becomes more complex as we go through more games, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Kingdom Hearts is an action RPG, and a damn fun one at that. In combat, you move around in real time, but have a command menu reminiscent of a turn-based RPG that you navigate with a D-pad. Slamming the attack command repeatedly gives you a fairly simple combo, and you also have access to magic. Various spells take different amounts of your MP bar, very standard stuff. Whatever items you equip for Sora to have in his personal inventory, it's so weird how he can't just carry hundreds of items on him at any given time like most other RPG characters, and also summons, all of which are Disney characters. If navigating these menus to do everything seems a bit cumbersome for a real-time battle system, you can also hotkey spells and items to come up when you press certain shoulder buttons. Eventually, you unlock defensive abilities, a guard and a dodge roll. Donald and Goofy fight alongside you too, with Donald acting as your mage and Goofy being a knight, who just uses a shield. Really combat effective there, Goofy. Thanks. While in certain worlds, you can swap one of them out, this should almost always be Donald because he dies stupid quickly and tends to waste his MP for a different Disney character. Overall, it's a fairly simple combat system, especially when compared to more in-depth character action games like Bayonetta, but I think it's more useful to view this as an RPG that asks for more dexterity and skill out of the player than traditional turn-based battle systems. You're gaining experience, you're leveling up and improving your stats, sometimes from leveling or story events you gain new abilities that you have to equip that change your primary combo, give you some situational special attacks, or add a more passive benefit to your characters. The point is, combat may be a bit more complex than it initially seems, and more importantly, it's fun. A lot of that may have to do with the enemies the game puts you up against. New Heartless are constantly being introduced, and most of them feel very individual. Whether that be from their amazing designs, seriously, Kingdom Hearts enemies rank among my favorites in all of video games on their appearance alone. Or the fact that many enemy types require unique strategies to take down. Aside from a few poorly handled oversized bosses, most of the boss fights are an absolute blast too. And the soundtrack is breathtaking. There are renditions of familiar Disney songs songs, which I liked and you probably already know if you'll like or not, but the original songs are where the music really shines. Battle tracks are as exciting as they should be, and the emotional songs left an impact on me. There are very few songs, not just from video games, but in existence that stir up emotions in me the same way that Dearly Beloved does, and that's just the title screen music. Though, as much as I love this game, and I really, really do, it's not without its issues. You're often given very little direction for where you're supposed to go next within a game world. I'm not one of those people who needs an arrow or dot telling me exactly where to go next, but there were times in this game where I had to rely on nothing but straight up wandering around hoping to trigger an event. None of the worlds are incredibly large, so this usually doesn't take too long, but it's also not fun to be running around in circles hoping to find some area or event you might have missed. If you ever feel like you're really lost, don't be afraid to consult a guide. Especially for Atlantica, the Little Mermaid level where you are made into a mermaid. Merman? Merboy? Merperson. And your movement system is changed so you can move vertically up and down, cause you know, you're swimming. Neverland has a similar mechanic with flying, but it's not throughout the entire world. This fucking sucks. It just stops feeling fluid to move around an environment, and it changes up combat too. The entire world just isn't fun because it's easy to get lost, moving around can be a pain in the ass, and combat feels significantly less enjoyable. I'm not against a game taking risks, and later on in this franchise, a rather similar concept works out amazingly, but you can bet your ass that I'll bitch about it when those risks don't pay off. Also, this game has platforming. Like many games that seem to tack in platforming just because, it feels like garbage. The problem comes from your jump being too floaty, which makes it feel like you have less control over your jump than you should, which of course leads to errors, and this isn't the kind of game where falling during a platforming section damages you or kills you, oh no, it's the kind that wastes your goddamn time for making a mistake by either forcing you to climb back up to the area you were at or forcing you to slowly move back to the beginning of the platforming section, which is something I'm fine 
fine with when the jumping actually feels good, and as a consequence I can blame my skill set rather than the game itself. And the worst part is, I know these developers can make platforming feel good, because they do it later in this game! Eventually you unlock an ability called High Jump, which changes your jump and, shockingly, adds some height to it. The jump you get from that ability feels snappier and you're given more control over it, which makes me think that they made the standard jump feel bad on purpose, which is just conjecture on my part, but regardless of the reason behind that crappy jump, it sucks. Though as you do eventually get that high jump ability, this problem goes away. Hey, remember when I mentioned that the worlds are connected by space and that you need a spaceship or something similar to travel between worlds? Luckily for Sora, ignorant to modern technology and the requirements for actual space travel, Donald and Goofy have the gummy ship, and by god it's a piece of shit. Every time you travel between worlds, you get, and by get, I of course mean have to, play a gummy ship level. Gummy ship levels are Star Fox drained of nearly everything that makes Star Fox enjoyable. They're third person auto scrolling spaceship shooter sections, but they're slow and they aren't challenging at all. For most of them, you can literally just fly up to the top of the screen and wait until the mission is over. It's ridiculous! There's a customization system that I didn't even open on this playthrough because I knew I could slog through all of these missions without ever touching it. They're boring as sin and you GET to play through one of them every time you travel between worlds. You do eventually get a warp drive that lets you skip ones you've already played, but you still have to play a gummy ship mission every time you head towards a new world, and I dreaded the experience every single time. Even the story isn't without its issues, I don't think it's outright bad, and I like many of the characters and there are a few strong individual moments, but overall the story never really gripped me. I never kept playing to find out what would happen next, it was usually to experience more of the gameplay, and yes, that includes my first time playing through this game too. It doesn't help that Donald Duck and Goofy have voices that were originally meant to be funny, so when they're part of a more serious scene, it can just seem a bit odd. Also, if you're not somewhat familiar with with Disney's movies, you might feel a bit lost here. See, in each Disney world that you go through, the events of a Disney movie are playing out in an abridged and slightly altered way, what with the world-devouring darkness and Final Fantasy OCs being there. Sometimes those storylines are so abridged that they make very little sense to anyone who isn't familiar with whatever movie they're abridging, which is something you can deal with, as I did in Kingdom Hearts 2 for my first run, but it isn't ideal. It's meant to set off nostalgia triggers because so much of Disney's stuff is considered classic. And for people like me, who fanatically watched Disney films as a child because one of their parents was obsessed with it, that's wonderful. Exploring these Disney worlds and interacting with all these characters from my childhood was great, and I'm a fan of Final Fantasy to boot, so those little nods, like the magic having the same naming convention as in Final Fantasy, were fun too. But if you're unfamiliar with those things, it won't really mean anything to you. It's not something that's necessarily bad, more neutral I guess, but still, a lot of what people find enjoyable in Kingdom Hearts will be lost on you, and you might be confused by why some things seem to be given such a grand treatment. I'll put a list of what I think the most important Disney movies are to this particular game in the description, so if you want to make sure you've seen them before playing this game, you can. As far as Final Fantasy stuff goes, as long as you know that the main character of Final Fantasy VII, Cloud, doesn't like the main villain of Final Fantasy VII, Seven, Sephiroth, you should be good as far as direct story references go. Everything else related to Final Fantasy is a bit less intrusive. So, where can you play this damn game? The original version is available on PS2, and there's an HD remake available in the Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix collection on PS3 with a bit of added content, though I feel obligated to mention that I don't like the particular version of the other complete game included in that package, and the other thing included is just a collection of cutscenes from another game, which you should really avoid in favor of actually playing that game, because it's really good but I'll get there later. I'm not the biggest fan of all the added content, namely the rare Heartless. There's a crafting system in the game called Synthesis that involves taking various item drops from enemies and turning them into items. You have to make all of the lower tier items before you open up higher tiers, and in the HD remake, that means grinding rare Heartless, an enemy type that has a chance of spawning in certain specific areas. 
The game, of course, gives you no indication of where these are or what gimmicks are required to beat them in a way that actually gives you the material you need to make whatever the fuck happens to be up next on your synthesis list, which means that you will almost definitely have to use a guide of some kind. This would be the only way to get the best weapon in the game, which I wanted, so I suffered through this shit. Though that version also adds an additional secret boss, as well as a few extra story tidbits. Uh, the synthesis stuff is entirely optional, I just really wanted the best weapon and am dumb about things like that, and there are more technical improvements like camera controls that are actually consistently usable, so that's probably the better version to pick up. A lot of people will probably be turned away by issues that this game has. And if you're one of those people, you have every right to be. This game does have issues and it can be annoying. For me, the core gameplay and kind of crazy concept of this game is enjoyable enough to put up with all the extra bullshit that the game throws at you. And if you're wondering, most other games in the franchise deal with my complaints for this one in one way or another. That said, this has been I Won't Use a Number. If you like this video, you can subscribe and maybe share it with your friends. Keep loving what you love, and I'll see you next time with something else. Oh!